right, there we go. Hello, everyone. Uh, let me just make sure that everything actually works. It does seem to be working. Cool. <laughs> hey, Bakao, welcome to the stream. All right, um, let us get started. So uh, you guys wanted to um, see me build things that I typically don't build. And apparently the idea of a um, game that teaches you JavaScript was intriguing, at least to some of you. So I thought we would just try and do that. Um, right, so the idea here is that we actually try to build a game that would teach people the concepts of JavaScript, you know, from the very basics, from starting from like um, variables, going to functions, to conditions, to loops, to everything, right? And it has to be, at least the way that I envision it, it has to be something like the game from the Zachtronic. So this is what we're gonna use as a reference and uh, well, hopefully we can, um, you know, at least get close to making it as good, right? So we, I, I think we would just take the latest one they have, uh, the Exapunks, because it's really good. Basically it has to be just as visual and as easy to navigate as this one. And I mean, I probably won't be able to make graphics as good, but we can try, you know what, we can try. Uh, okay, so the idea is that, um, yeah, so we need the editor for the source code, we need some place that would have the task description. And we need a way to run the tests, right? So this is at least the in the beginning, the three things. And in the end, we also need some sort of a, so the four panel, right? Visualization for the result. Okay, um, I guess I would just so then again, you know, this is, uh, let me just create a folder. Um, I really want to call it JS craft, but I won't because I know that we won't change a name at any point in the future. Let's call it. Um, um, I don't know, do you guys have any suggestions for the names because I am to be honest, never thought about that before this. So I would appreciate if you have anything good. Um, because otherwise I'm just gonna name it JS craft, which is incredibly stupid. Yeah, the same here. You know what? It's gonna be JS craft because why? <laughs> oh, because why not? Let's call it JS craft. There we go. Okay, um, right. Um, here we go. Stupid name uh, check. We got everything we can start with. Okay, let me just pull out the terminal. We're gonna go into VSL. And uh, we're gonna do npm init minus y here. And we're gonna do git in it, right? So we need npm and git. Right, and the first thing that I'm gonna do is actually add a readme md. Uh, so because I would start the whole project uh, from the description, right? So like, JS, I'm gonna regret this name. Uh, game that teaches you JavaScript. Uh, okay, so First thing that I want to do is basically describe uh, test cases, right? Or I guess, um, how do you call it? lessons? Test lessons, I guess. Lesson asks, asks. We're gonna think of quests, maybe. We're gonna think about that uh, in a point. So uh, basically, the idea is that we come up with a bunch of lessons, quests, tasks, call it whatever you want, missions. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. Mission, yeah, mission is a good word, missions. And we're gonna build our basic framework around those missions in a way that will basically allow us to uh, pilot them and then to expand from there, basically making them more complex, right? So my general idea is that we start with the very basic things like, you know, hey, here's a variable and this variable renders something on a screen or maybe, you know, to make it more fun on a large advertisement panel in New York City or whatever. And then you can go to, you know, like conditionals, you can go to closures and the, uh, in my, at least in my head is sort of can expand beyond just being JavaScript to talking, okay, here we have a Node.js, there's like a file system, there is the IO, there's the network, there's the sockets. And then beyond that, uh, even further, you know, the stuff like Git, SSH, Docker, I don't know, maybe Kubernetes, but that's like very far-fetched basically. So it has to be a pretty flexible framework, essentially is what I'm saying. But we're gonna start with the basic mission. So the first mission would be essentially uh, user is given a variable 
uh, var, 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 I cannot I cannot type obviously a variable that he has to change right so this is like the stupidest case the entry point you get a var the user has to change it uh, there should be tests that would be executed to make sure the variable now is correct that's it so the second case that is more complex is conditionals now um so that means that there should be uh, so the so okay first set of var mission let's call it this way and uh, the second one is going to be conditional mission i maybe i'm forgetting something but i think at least you know this is the uh, we can define three sort of core missions complexity wise and then think if if i miss something later on so the conditional mission is going to be um there will be a global value that user has to react to, right? So basically there will be something that is gonna be defined by our environment. The user will have to write code that would check that global value and assign something, I guess, right? And the last one is gonna be function mission where the user has to um, user has to write a function that basically does something, right? So we, um, I don't know, maybe factor or something stupid, basically, maybe adding two numbers would be a good start for, for the beginning. Okay, so we got that part. Um, we got the thing, so I don't know. Do we, I guess I'll just go with next.js as usual, npm. I'll next react react dom because I am too lazy and next always works really well. Okay, um, so I would say in the beginning, we're gonna do everything on the client side. We don't really care much about the backend and we're gonna see how that develops because I am not entirely sure. You know what should I do? I should probably disable the defender because gonna slow down the there you go now it should be a bit faster it's I'm, I'm forgetting that defender is slowing down the uh vsl stuff okay okay there we go okay so we got the next js and now we got the scripts are gonna be let's just go for dev right now next dev uh why is it next dev i'm forgetting about that a bit so let's go next js the missions where users have yes so that's the cool so basically the idea with the those three missions that we have right now is sort of that they are defining the core framework for it right because here in the variable mission it's basically the user bit is very simple because the user should be just able to uh, change the variable value and that's it right the tricky part here is to then uh, parsing that user input and giving it to the tester module. So that we're basically on this first mission, we're gonna focus on writing the test code that would test this uh, user input and provide us everything that we want. Conditional mission is interesting because there will be a value that user should see in the editor, but should not be able to edit. So it should be like immutable bit of code, right? So like, hey, here's actually something, but you don't really have access to it. So we have to sort of expand our editor and make only parts of it editable, I guess, uh, if that makes sense. And then in a function mission, it's actually gonna be like a function that user has to write that will be invoked from the outside and it's basically gonna be like a proper unit test. Uh, in the end, yes, we can make missions where basically there's, hey, you can, you need to refactor this, you know, and there's like, or maybe even to make it even more complex, here is the very specific place that you have to refactor to make it faster or simpler or whatever. And the, I think those three missions that we have right now should give us a nice framework that will be flexible or that should be flexible enough to allow us to do uh, basically anything with the user code, right? So we should have access to like abstract syntax tree, to the execution, to the context and to all that kind of stuff. So we are gonna see how that goes. Okay, so it's just next. Um, I'm, you know what, I'm just gonna copy this because I'm too lazy. Right, okay, so we got this uh, npm run dev is what we start and probably should create the pages I think we're just gonna go for one page right now because I mean, it's like, I so basically the end game here would be to then create the mission editor, right? That would allow us to uh, 
not just define those missions in JSON or whatever, but to actually craft them uh, within the environment itself, which would be perfect. But uh, for now, we're just gonna have one page that will basically uh, handle everything for us and the missions we're just gonna write manually. Um, hello world, let's see that it works. Okay, npm run dev. Let's check if that works. There is, I believe there was actually a browser. Uh, yeah? Okay, no. I think it was maybe a plugin or something. I, I don't know if I feel like switching to the browser all the time. Uh, thousand. Okay, so we got this. Um, let me think. Okay, you know what? Maybe I'll just find browser. Yeah, just install the plugin so that we stop switching. Open in browser, view in browser. Uh, bra bra there. there should be. I believe there was like another explore. No, explorer is not what we want. Appearance, editor layout, two columns, flip columns. That's. I remember I saw the like integrated browser shop, but whatever. Okay, don't want to spend time on that. Okay, so right. So what do we need to start with? I guess we need to start with a basic layout, and I think I'm just gonna CSS grid builder and just. Uh, no, I definitely saw it on VS Code. I know that Bracket has it, but I mean, VS Code is, you know, not much different. There is definitely a plugin like this, but I just don't remember what it is and uh, I don't want to spend time searching for it, basically. Okay, so I'm just going to make it two by two. That's basically all we need and get the codes. Uh, like, <laughs> CSS Grid is convenient as hell. Okay, class name, thank you very much. Now we're gonna be style JSX and we are gonna do this. And I'm just gonna copy up, not the whole thing. Thank you very much. There we go. Okay, so now we should have um, layout with uh, four elements, I think. The only question is, I, to be honest, I um, never used grid that much. So I am not sure. A -B. What? No, 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 See? What? Oh, come on. Oh, I guess this is what. So, okay. So I guess we have to name the area. So let's name it. So this is going to be description, right? Uh, this is going to be user, uh, user codes. This is going to be preview. And this is going to be tests. This is essentially what we want. And okay, now that makes more sense. I'm going to copy this inner stuff. Uh, right, so we got the style, we got the grid containers. Um, we got, I guess, just uh, the like description. By the way, really digging the new look of the VS Code on Windows. This is the fresh September update and all this black looks amazing. User code, uh, we got preview and we got tests, right? Okay, so we got grid container and we got those things that basically define the other styles. There we go. Okay, so now we should get yep, grid here. So can you, can I say grid gap? We don't care, rows call. I guess it's fine now, okay. Cool, so we got the basic grid going. Now, um, I guess for now, okay, I don't really need terminal anymore for now. What we can do is we can say that we have a task, right? That will have description. So for now, I'm just gonna define everything in line. Uh, and later on, we can basically figure out how to properly structure all of that. Uh, so user code, um, then we're gonna need preview and we're gonna need tests, right? Uh, I guess tests are gonna be an array. Okay, so make um, variable should equal two, whatever. I guess let's make it two as a string, right? String. User code where change me equals one. Okay, uh, maybe a good idea to actually do it as a template literals because then I can use proper formatting there we go okay uh should equal one string okay now we got this preview um right so how do we do okay there we go so basically here's the tricky bit first of all we need some sort of a preview 
And second of all, uh, so task description, task user code. Okay, uh, so this should render this and this, right? Okay, so now the tricky bits. Uh, here's another question, wait a second. Can I just make a, a CSS grid border? Some border so that it actually basically separates it somehow. <laughs> Because it a bit blurs in my face because I don't know. Uh, item backgrounds. Okay, so item is what? Item is inside. Okay, so background border. Yeah, here you go. This is what I want. So our, I guess we just add the borders to this. Right? And I guess the uh, color should be black. And uh, no. Why is there no border? Uh, they lock. Um, oh, right. Oh, pff, I'm an idiot. Why is there no errors actually? Last name. This is what it should be. There. We go. Okay, that's a bit screwed up. Um, right. What is grid area description? E two two three. Two, uh, okay. How the hell do I define the description? I imagine it's gonna be. What is grid area? How does it work? Grid template. Oh, can I just say display grid grid template auto auto? Will that work actually? Grid template hate. Uh, so what if we just do this and then uh, it's item. Let's just call it grid item, right? And uh, grid item. So maybe, maybe I'll learn the grid as well while we're at it because I've never actually used it anywhere. There we go. That looks nice. Okay, cool. Uh, I guess maybe we can add a bit padding over here to make it more readable. Uh, it's, yeah, that looks good. Okay, cool. So, right. So the tricky bits are, first of all, we need to render this preview somehow, right? And this preview is dependent on the, or should be dependent on the user code. So how do we do that? Well, obviously you would want to have this as the react component, right? So class preview stands react components uh, and render gonna be okay for now I'm just gonna return div preview and we are gonna say that this is preview right so in this case we're gonna say that So we are, what we need to do is we need to say that this is gonna be returned. Okay, I guess we're adding some logic. So, okay, be the render method, and then we're gonna close the class and it's gonna be render. And uh, we're gonna say export default class home page extends react component, right? Uh, no, components, there we go. We got this, we got this going, yeah. And uh, now we need in render, we are gonna say, okay, preview, gonna be equal task preview, right? So this is our class, which means that now over here, we can just say uh, preview this. Okay, so it renders the components. Now we need to handle the user code and now we need to handle the oh okay does it would it actually need anything but the user okay you know what let's just start with the user code so uh we need an editor let's see react code editor is there something out of the box that i can use without thinking too much code sandbox what does code sandbox use actually they have their own stuff mm, code sandbox github have anything on github Code sandbox client uh, compiles uh, the dependency repositories. Next test Gatsby VS Code Dog Z MDX um, Code Sandboxer. Okay. Just a second. Let's have a look here. So, what do they have in dependencies? Um, not. Wait, no dependency. Oh, I guess because it's a multi package. Packages. 
Code Sandbox API, React Sandbox Hooks, Common. Maybe the app. Probably this is what we want. And the app has Babel, uh, just um, Selenium Web Driver, TypeScript, Webpack. Okay, those are development dependencies. Let's see, uh, the VS Code. Oh yeah, Monaco, right, that's true. They're probably using Monaco as well, right? Uh, downshift, use, CSS, nano, code. No, they're actually using Code Mirror. That's interesting. Huh. Oh, they're using, okay, Code Mirror and Monaco. Okay, oh, you know what? Let's try Monaco. Why not? Uh, sounds like a really good one. Um, is there a Monaco React? So we're gonna react Monaco. Uh, react Monaco editor, perfect. Well, let's try this. It is seven days ago, last commit, so pretty much alive. Let's do that. All right, yes, thank you for uh, reminding me. Yeah, Code Sandbox is like their editor is just amazing. Uh, install, so we are gonna install what? Well, react Monaco editor, so install that stuff. And do I, okay. Uh, oh, there's a Webpack plugin. Oh God, why do I have to be like this? But okay, we can do that. Um, so now I need the next JS thing. How do I edit the Webpack config? Webpack, customizing Webpack config. This want. Okay, uh, I don't want this, I want custom. Okay, so we create next config JS. That's slightly annoying, but Hey, what about that? Okay, and uh, we put this here. So we don't care about dev middleware in this case. All we care about is, um, there we go. So we take this plugin and throw it in plugin. Right? Um, I guess we just say config plugins equals, or I guess push would probably be better in this case. Right? All right, uh, hopefully that will work. NPM, uh, no, NPM run dev is what we want. Uh, nope, an error, what is error? Because you have to install it yourself, okay. NPM um, install, save dev, install this thing. That's mandatory using with Webpack. Like a Webpack plugin, I guess it is mandatory. All right, uh, so that works, that works. And in our app, we just, this, okay. So first of all, does it compile now? Come on. Oh, it seems to be at least building. Okay, cool. So this now works. Now let's try to actually require our Monaco editor. I probably should start splitting the code. It starts feeling clunky. And gonna paste it over here, right? So it's gonna be our user code thingy. Um, we're gonna make it smaller. Monk editor language JavaScript, VS Code Dark. So code is gonna be task user code for now. Options, what are the options? Select online numbers. Okay, so options for now, we're just gonna nix this on change and this on editor mounts. Why do we need those? I mean, on change is obvious, so we just get the new value and editor mounts. Okay, it's just for the focus. Uh, yeah, sure, why not? Let's get the both uh, because why not? Those. So doo -doo -doo, we're gonna self bind them so we can just use them nicely. There we go. And in this case, yep, that looks fine. Okay, so here's the question. Do we get editors files? Come on. Nope, something broke, obviously. Uh, right, it wants CSS. Okay, um, I guess we have to include the CSS. Uh, um, CSS, uh, no, this is not the CSS I want. Uh, yeah, there you go. okay, uh, right. npm install, what do we need to install? Site next CSS is what we want to install, right? And then we just do this and wrap our next config into that. I mean, that setup is a bit more complicated than what I would wanna have, but if that saves us from, you know, or if it makes us 
able allows us to use is what i want to say God damn it words are hard sometimes that allows us to use awesome uh vs code editor then man it's totally worth it okay uh let's see this compiles okay on and there is now a different error uh cannot find module monaco editor did i did oh i have to it's a peer dependency of course it's a peer dependency monaco editor and of course the documentation for react monaco editor doesn't really mention that no it doesn't okay then <laughs> why do you have to be like this okay how hard is it to use it actually on its own uh, work me on github is what i want and on the website and be on the style monaco editor integrate amd version complete samples is there Electron and VGS to, to, to ESM Webpack. Okay. They don't actually use any. Hmm. Interesting. These guys don't use any. So it, can it be that this is outdated? At what version? 0 0.19, seven days ago. This one is. Why does it always have to be so hard? Uh, 014. Okay. Does, I guess. Does it define peer dependencies? You have dependencies, peer react. It has Monaco in, in tech dependencies, so why does it break? Huh? What? Okay, then. Huh. Okay, I guess maybe something went south where the NPM install. Okay, let me do this. So we. Kick it and then I guess wipe the node modules and do npm install. Maybe the Monaco editor plugin broke something during installation. That's a bit weird, but it does happen from time to time. All right, uh, come on. <laughs> In before the first stream, instead of doing the actual work, we just end up setting up Monaco for the whole stream. That would not be fun. Okay. Come on, please tell me you compile this time around. <gasps> I know that was uh, no. Uh, uh. That is, wait a second. Ls node modules grab Monaco, right? Monaco. It is there. Uh huh. That is a, a oh, editor. Um, it might be easier, it might turn out that it's actually easier to just um, use it on our own while using the ASM version. Portal from Monaco. Okay, so now, okay, if you use the ASM version, you need this Monaco plugin thing. Okay, and you also need the CSS loader thing. Okay. Uh, npm run dev, let's see. You're working now or are you unhappy again? I don't even need this anymore. I guess we can leave that for now. Please tell me it compiles. Nope. Okay, so it's broken. <laughs> you have to be like this. Oh God, NPM RM. Okay, let's use it directly. Why not? We can do that. We can uh, write our own tiny wrapper around the Monaco editor. Right. So let me think components, right? So this is what we want. And let's call it just editor JS. Export defaults class editor um, extends react component. Right, so we got this thing. Uh, this is as it should be, right? So we got the plugins. Now um, ba -ba -bum, create. So we create, we call the create on specific nodes right um i guess i don't know which version amd will it actually load i guess it's gonna use sm version right okay um let's see we kill it from first of all we don't really need this thing anymore um what we need is we need import um editor from components what um set components editor there we go Okay, and in this case, we are just gonna say editor, right? 
it. And in this case, we're gonna have render. We're gonna have this Monaco bit. So in the, in the render, we're gonna have our div. We're gonna have reference. And then I need to remember um, how to use references in React because hell if I remember it out on top of my head. Oops, this editor ref. Um, what was it React reference? Refs and DOM. Uh, was it something like create ref? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so we want this thing. And uh, then say yes, this editor ref. And then once component did mount is what we want. We want to call this thing on. Actually, I don't think we need that. I think we can just do this. Create on uh, this uh, editor ref current. Yes, exactly. Okay, and then we got the value. Let's see if that actually renders because theoretically it should compile and render properly. Then we can, um, yeah, so I'm gonna copy those things. It means we don't really need any logic here yet, but you know what, I'm gonna leave it there. This and we are basically don't need, so I guess we need to pass the value here for now. Right, so let's see. Uh, NPM, I uh, know NPM run dev, there we go. Come on. Okay, he actually compiled a good start. Please tell me it compiles. Maybe there's some client error, but uh, no. Self is not defined. Uh, okay, so I guess I did not finish the Monaco editor setup. So we got this, we got this, we got this. Using plain webpack, what does it mean? Uh, self Monaco environment. Uh, does it actually push the plugin into the wait a second? Where's the next? Maybe I'm adding the plugin incorrectly. So plugins. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Config. No, this is not what I want. Uh, I guess. Wait a second. We can probably look at the index.js here and see how they do that. Uh, default CSS, model rules, webpack, uh, next config. Wait, am I pushing it to the wrong thing? So we got config, is this next config, not the, no, it is webpack. Got the webpack uh, and config options, options, config modules, rules. Okay, here's the question. If I do that, I should be able to see the plugins, right? At least in theory, unless they suppress the... Okay, uh, so we got chunk names, we got, yeah, that looks fine. And we got the Monaco plugin as well. Why does it self, self is not defined. So Monaco, uh, next JS self not defined. Let's try to find that. Maybe there's already a solution. Uh, Monaco editor, React SSR. Oh, it's a SSR thing. Okay, as usual. Yeah, this is like one of the things that is a bit painful about um, Next.js. Like if you try to do SSR things and you know something doesn't really work on server, you're gonna have a bit of a problem. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna say this Mon uh, this Monaco is gonna be object uh i mean okay you know what we're just gonna say this false and if uh this monaco is gonna be wire so i'm gonna use require instead and now um next js if browser there was a conditional that you can only basically execute on the process browser i think right yep there you go. Okay, so basically by default, Monaco is gonna be false, or I guess we can just say editor uh, create, and it's gonna be like a dummy function. So it's basically not gonna do anything, right? And so on a server, it basically is gonna do nothing. And on a client, it's gonna actually require the Monaco itself. Yeah. 
theoretically that should work practically we we're, we're gonna find out in a second okay that compiled let me refresh that nope okay something else breaks so what now um editor nothing was returned from a, a render oh bleh, right okay that is a mistake okay hey um that <laughs> i think it works but i guess we need a bit more config there that looks tiny okay so what are the uh monaco editor options using that pack monaco editor samples that pack uh is there an example of what exactly you have to join language javascript container fi config no there's no real or i guess you no they don't define css as well uh okay uh let's see there is the config description please uh, api docs i guess good editor create uh, no create is what i want right so we got options uh editor constructor options is what we want they're like size or something here uh word wrap value theme line height line numbers okay uh let's see and colons cursor style there is a ton of options here this is kind of great over line numbers line height uh app model mm. how the hell do you or do you just like do it with the css is that how it works let's show me the editor here got this thing is super tiny. What if I just say with 300 peaks, height 300 peaks? And that, I guess maybe it needs it before it renders. This Monaco in render. Oh, uh, right. That is a good point. That is a very good point. Thank you. I. That still doesn't help us much. I mean, I, the thing is that it actually renders, which is a bit amusing because I would expect that should have failed but for whatever reason it actually is rendered uh, okay let's try let's just try doing this with um 400 hey 300 there we go okay that looks better but very big but i guess that's fine for now right so we got our thing going okay so uh instead of this we are gonna say this props value right right there we go so first of all we can make height maybe 100 pixels we don't need it to be that big right uh, oh it even has the the whole like thingy here <laughs> that is really awesome okay so we got this thing going i'm, I'm curious it even Holy shit, that works out of the box. Okay, there is some errors over here. I think the require has a side effect and it's setting window Monaco. Oh, okay, that might be the case. But there are now a bunch of errors. Refuse to create worker because it violates CSP. <coughs> um, worker store is known. So I guess it doesn't really work with uh, node worker because why work actually, right? Unexpected usage. Load foreign module. Okay, so there are some errors, but uh, like why does it throw errors now? Okay, a second. React Monaco. Is there a simpler way to make it work with the react so we have this thing right and but it does it didn't really work at least with the next maybe it didn't work with next.js for the same reasons maybe it's just the uh ssr here's the question okay let's let's try this again uh now now that i know a bit more about how um, monaco works maybe all we have to really do is just say monaco is gonna be nothing right so it's gonna be a span and 
if we're in a browser, we're gonna require React Monaco Editor, right? Um, and we no longer need this, which is great. And we no longer need a ref, which is also great. I'm just gonna test this and see if that actually works. And in here, we're gonna render um, 100 by 100, JavaScript VS Code, so this props value. We don't need options and uh, we just find this this and uh, const monaco calls this monaco right okay um here's the question would that actually solve our problem so because it might have been all this thing might have been related to the next ssr rendering and doing that might make it work which would be just great because I honestly don't want to, you know, fiddle with it myself. Okay, we have uh, React created element type as invalid, expected a string, but got object. Am I importing the wrong thing now? Okay, let me think. Import Monaco editor from React Monaco editor. Oh, because it is probably default, right? hey it actually works okay um let me refresh any errors we do have some errors so we have the same okay so we have the same worker error um for some reason not create web worker falling back to loading web worker code in the main thread but okay you know what it works we can figure it out later but see that is not critical right now i guess i could move dev tools over here which means this is now all nice and simple. Okay, cool. So we got the codes. Uh, obviously, this is going to be main thread. So it's going to be way slower than with a worker, but we can solve that, as I said, later on. Right, so now we need the... Pro for, for, okay, first of all, we need to propagate the code changes uh, to the parent, right? So I guess in this case... No, we still need this wrapper because... Um, because it has to, because we have the whole SSR thing going, right? So it will be easier to do this, right? So I guess we have to propagate changes, props change is what we're gonna just do. So we're gonna do it in a very naive way in the beginning and then uh, expand basically later on. So we can do that, right? Okay, so if I refresh it, we should be focused on the editor. Cool, we got that. Now uh, we can close this. Next.js server needs to serve editor worker JS. Oh, so it's a static, static thing, right? Uh, server can, but is it not loaded or is it just prohibited? That's a good question. Maybe just a second. It is 404. So okay, you are correct. It's just not found. The workers are not found. Uh, okay, we can solve this later. As I said, that's a good point. Uh, let me just write this down and read me. Kudos, um, serve Monaco, uh, serve Monaco service worker files statically. I mean, the stupid way would be just copy them, but uh, for now it's fine. So we can, we can work with the main thread. All right, so we got the editor, we got the value, we got on change. And on change, it is gonna be uh, this handle code change, right? So we're gonna have the handle code change thing and it is going to be new value and um, um here's the question how do we do that i mean theoretically you would want to say that state is basically description this task description um you know what i'm going to do i'm going to do this task right this is going to expand copy the task to the state which means that in this case we can just set state uh, user code, no, no. Select user code is gonna be new value, right? So we can do this, which means that the code should be, and it won't be updated, right? Because we don't really propagate. Uh, yeah, right, because I am not using the correct thing here. This state uh, user code. Okay, uh, that actually is now working, which is great. Um, now, so we got the code updates, which means 
we should now pass uh, stuff to this thing, right? So first we're gonna pass this state user code. Okay, so we got our preview component and this preview component actually is a part of our task, right? So I guess it is time to abstract that because it is becoming a bit complicated. Let's call it missions is what we're gonna call it, right? It's gonna be mission one JS. And I am gonna take this thing over here. I'm gonna do it this way, right? And uh, we're gonna X, no, we don't really need to export preview. We need to export default task, right? So this is what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna import task from uh, mission, mission one. Preview, task preview, yep, that looks good. We're gonna save this and theoretically, mission, mission one, uh, what? Only expressions, function and classes are allowed as default export. Oh, did I screw up my export? Oh yeah, I did screw up my export. Of course, uh, this should be this and now it should be one, right? There we go, okay, cool. So this thing, this props uh, value is gonna be user code, right? Okay, and now what we need to do is, okay, first of all, let's just render it and actually make sure that it actually works as expected. And it is actually doesn't. I passing it, oh, oh it's code. There we go, okay, so now we render it and if I change it, it re-renders correctly. Right, so now we need to evaluate this code and actually get the results from its execution, right? Because this is what we want to have in the preview window. So it would be a nice rendering of the result essentially. Um, <laughs> so let me think. Um, yes, sandbox browser. Execute untrusted code with custom permissions. That sounds exciting and it's outdated. Uh, always a bit sad. I think I've seen some library that did that. Uh, GitHub, maybe. Uh, GlotHub is not what I want. <laughs> OpenJS sandbox. Uglybox. Uh, Sandbox.js, Mu1, Sandcastle, Sandblaster. Yeah, let's check all of them out. I mean, the stupid way obviously would be to say, hey, just run eval and you know, it's your own fault if you break your own browser. But I would want a bit more control over it, I guess. So uh, running it in a prom, uh, sorry, in a worker is actually a really good idea. That means that it's a completely isolated environment and it cannot break out of there. That is, okay, um, I need to write this down, uh, um, things. Eval in worker. So I'm just gonna write this down because that is actually a very good idea. Sandbox iframe, that sounds very old. Eight years ago, nice, no thank you. Um, okay, build browsers and browser-like applications. That is C++, that is not what we want. Powerful and simple sandbox to run. Um, okay, nope, that is not what we want. That is also old. Sand Blaster, iframes. Okay, um, let's try, I mean, I wish the GitHub search was a bit better than it is now, JS box. No, not in this repository, come on, GitHub. Can you find something? Uh, I guess, you know what we can do? We can do search sandbox and then just filter by JavaScript and then just say, give me the most stars. Uku sandbox, dynamic malware analysis in JavaScript for real, okay. VM sandbox for, ah, uh, Node.js, come on. Yeah, I think this is the module that I saw, but it's just Node.js. GLSL sandbox, Node.js interpreter. Okay, that sounds interesting. Sandbox interpreter in JavaScript, execute arbitrary JavaScript line by line in isolation and safety. Okay, that sounds like exactly what we need. We can do step-by-step -step execution. Interesting. Huh, okay. If you run it, it literally does the alert, okay. What is it, documentation. So it was updated August 13, so pretty fresh. 
What are the dogs? The dogs are not that great. Limitations. I mean, in our case, it's not that critical. I <laughs> like I would really want to use something that is existing basically, so I don't have to reinvent the wheel, but file docker base sandbox. We don't we don't want backend right now. Okay. I guess yeah okay um yeah let's just go with the web worker solution it's actually it's actually very elegant and nice i would web worker com link i think was the tiny library yes yes there we go okay but we need yeah okay so we have to basically create a static worker class and first of all let's install the com link yes and we're going to use a com link to communicate with our wait, npm install com link. There we go. So we're going to, um, first of all, uh, blah, 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 blah. I don't want to no idea. Close this. Um, Next.js is what I want. I want a static file serving. I remember there was a folder that you can create. Static, yes. Uh, create a folder called static and OK. Create a folder called static, and we're gonna create. Uh, how we're gonna call eval worker. Okay, yes, let's call it this way. Got the com link, and we're gonna do this. Com link exposed, but is it? I guess com link is gonna patch it somehow. Okay, let's just test it. Save this for now. We're gonna this and this, and we're gonna do this. Okay, our Evaluation, which means we need to do this in our mission thing. Right? So we got the com link. Uh, how do I? I have to import the com link somehow, right? And there's a collection example directory. Okay, simple example. Yes, I guess they include it as the. I oh know it's actually imported as a module. How is it imported in a worker? Import scripts. Uh, okay, so they import it with import script. Okay, I mean, we can do that. It can use the uh, import here. Okay, and in HTML, we are just gonna basically say uh, import com link from com link, right? And uh, okay, so let's see. Theoretically, if we now start the app, we should should see the logging from the uh, from the web worker, right? Uh, does this work? Workerize. I think Workerize is also nice, but it's uh, slightly, slightly different. It's like it won't allow us complex. Like it will be hard to write this. You know, it's it's uh, in my opinion, it will be easier to write a standalone module rather than a small function like this, because the our worker is gonna be pretty um, complicated. Right? Come on. Evade is oh, I did I just try to evade on the top level? Yes, I did. Okay, run sync just to test that this actually works. Run okay, now you should compile and module what unexpected token export. What where wait a second, where did you fail? And new script, create script. Is the com link there? Like, uh, oh yeah, UMD. Is that what I want? Yeah, I guess that's what I want. Nope, that's not what I want. So I guess com like this. Is that what you want? And rejection message port is not defined. What is message port? Yes. That doesn't seem to be correct. Second. Yeah, okay. Um, let, let me just check. That is a bit weird. Node modules, com link, UMD. Okay, so we got the com link JS, right? And it is a correct thing, and it seems to be. What is it? It is UMD. Okay, so this should be able to import it. Import from comlink.js. Okay. Did it click? 
cache was dirty or something. Come on. I want to finish at least the basic version today. Like this is, yeah, message port is not defined. What is message port? Where is it coming from? Okay, I'm guessing is this is a bit so the is the oh what do you call it source map it seems to be a bit broken workerize is nice but you need to add the webpack loader to use it yeah i mean the theoretically this should work but what is message port message port is not defined why is it throwing this error what message port how is that not defined rom doesn't have mess rom doesn't have some ap no, there it is. Oh, is it again? Oh, come on. It's probably again because of the server side rendering. Yes, thank you. I somehow didn't connect that. Um, okay, now here's the question. If I just import it, will it work? Oh, is it like execution problem? Okay, it is an execution problem. Right, so on, on render, um, constructor props. Yeah, we, I should, I don't know, like, as much as I like the, uh, as much as I like Next.js for all its really simple things, those kind of SSR related issues sometimes are a bit painful. Uh, oh, it just removed my import. Wait a second. What? Uh, common name? From comlink.js, right? And in our case in constructor if browser uh, process browser i'm gonna say that this my class uh, is gonna be eval worker here's the question why is ssr causing uh ssr is causing all those issues because those things are not available in the server right because the server environment is different from the browser and this is why um Export default was not defined. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, and uh, it is not fine. I guess fine. Why not? Why not? We can use require. I can use require. I don't care if it's import or require. I guess they change how the import loads things. Unexpected token export. Uh, oh, pfft, right. Uh, this is what I want. Import coming. Yes, now that should work, right? Yeah, okay, so it wants me to import it only in the browser. Okay, we can do that. I mean, theoretically, you could mock all the needed classes on the server side, which would mean that um, then it would basically load and work properly, right? But I just wanna spend time doing that. So we, we can try like, you know, if, if you guys, like what you see right now, if you like where this all is going, we can basically keep building this thing and fix all those SSR related issues, figure all of them out. I guess you cannot have a sync constructor. Um, okay, I need worker. Let's call it this way. And uh, yes, I'm gonna just copy this. And if we're running in a browser, we're gonna say this web worker, okay. Uh, right, and where's my log? Uh, simple worker, not what I want. Oh my God, there's so many errors right now that it's a bit hard. You know what? Let me just do it in a stupid way. Oh, because I am, I know what's the error because it should be static because we are loading from the wrong thing. And how to get over the issue? Well, this issue, right? Um, like the ideal solution is the library that is aware of the server side environment, right? So this is like a uh, majority of the libraries are now uh, server side aware. My class is not defined. Uh, right, okay. Right, right. This is what do. Okay, uh, and there we go. So it actually works. So yeah, uh, the ideal option is the library for React or you know whatever that is aware that there might be server side environment and that basically acts correspondingly, it returns a simpler render or doesn't return anything. 
Um, the other option is to just mock it yourself and create all the required dummy classes that do nothing again, for example, right? So it will be rendered. But then again, if you're not rendering anything, you might as well just do this and say, hey, you know, if we're not in a browser, then you just don't call anything. Okay, so let's call it um, uh, eval worker, right? I'm going to say, uh, I guess I don't really need to say this eval worker is instance, right? Instance, um, let me new this eval worker. Okay, uh, so we got this eval worker, we got the class, uh, we don't need the value. So we're gonna be eval code, code, right? Now here's the thing. Okay, uh, I wonder how that will work. Uh, theoretically, we actually should, we would need to actually provide some wrapper around it, right? Because just evaluating it, I'm not even sure what that would return. Um, okay, and once the code, uh, uh, so we need what? We need to actually on new props, components will give props, I guess. Wasn't this method deprecated or what was it? Component will give props. Uh, uh, static component mount, should component update, snapshot before updates, get drive. Okay, I mean, we can, I guess we can use get drive state from props. Um, it'll, yeah, okay, will receive props is now dedicated. So how do we do this properly? I mean, one option would be get drive state. We derive the state actually. Uh, maybe that is either perform a side effect, recompute some data, reset some state props. Oh boy, I wonder does it does it support a sync? No, it is a static and not a sync, so this is not what we want. I guess we can use it, right? So get the right same prop prop state. Uh, that right. So we can just basically say return state and then say this recompute uh, or I guess re eval code props, right? Or maybe even props code in the, oh yeah, you know what? Let's just pass the whole props because why not? Re eval code, uh, and in this case it's gonna be code, right? Be a sync, and uh, I guess we should bind it to the component. Which means then we're gonna say eval worker instance. Uh, what was the package? We don't need editor for now. Eval code. Eval code. Code. Uh, const results equals await this. Console log results. Okay. Here's the question. I. Well, okay. What do you not know now? Uh, I screwed something up. Apparently. What did I screw up? Um, what am I? Oh, right. <laughs> That's where it should be. Okay, now it works. Cool. Okay, um, there we go. So we don't, okay, we didn't change anything. So right now, if I remove that and unexpected usage, this other worker and the eval, I guess, doesn't really return anything. Ah. Uh, my class, okay, call it eval worker just to be consistent. I guess, yeah, I guess because the eval, so if I eval var a equals one, basically not going to return anything, right? So it's just gonna make a equal one, exactly. Okay, so we need to wrap this code into something that would make the browser assign this change me value to our global environment, right? So I guess, what can we, how can we achieve this? Oh boy, okay, this is a tricky one. So we need to say eval and 
then we got the var a equal one and we got something around it right so we need okay i have to think about that can it be a self-invoked function probably can right and do this and then i guess function itself would be a bit better because we don't want to bind any context and if you execute it with oh i don't know okay okay this is a tricky bit so how do you eval js code get variable i mean one option one option would be to parse the abstract syntax tree here right to get it okay yeah yeah so we eval that uh do not ever use eval yes i know about that return huh json part okay so if if we do good question if we do this now we're gonna spend half of the stream experimenting with eval which equal one but theoretically a legal statement um yes you cannot just do that right so again if you do module exports that is also unexpected token var yes huh so how do you how do we do this maybe using abstract syntax tree is really one the best option here actually the ast parser Good. so there was the um yes yeah javascript is what we want because ast parser is not just javascript thing so we got the acorn at the esprima we got the recast and i guess acorn would be the most used one author finding status oh no prima uh project git we go so this is slightly outdated one is used by the also slightly outdated one is used by babel actually so i guess the ast parsing would probably do us the best here because then we don't actually even have to execute the code at least in this stage uh babel js package json he said um yes lint flow husky learner here rough okay those are all the uh, engines so uh, okay babel as parser what kind of parser do they oh they have their own parser previously known as but okay uh can i use it people parser please tell me there are no that's not what i want babylon moved into babel babel parser okay so they have the babel parser package here uh do, 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 are there docs for that uh, because if there are no docs it's gonna be very set parse parse expression i guess it's as simple as that it just returns the st right so let's try that i mean why not let's try parsing the ast but god damn it. i'm always pressing the wrong thing okay so we got the babel parser which means that for now we don't actually need that we can just use the babel parser. i mean theoretically we would want to move the babel parser into the separate thread as well right we got the parser and then parse code uh what are the options okay code okay um we don't need that stuff for now no button i really have to glue my key back tearing it away from the keyboard was not a good decision okay <laughs> right so let's see um to the I mean, worker we don't need any worker so we're fine with that we take the code and we need to parse 
parser parse right and then it's going to be code and what kind of options do we give strict mode don't care tokens don't care so i guess we can just say okay so we can provide plugins in this case we don't really need them which is nice uh, so i guess we can just say code parse right that should basically give us the ast of the uh code in this case. mm run dev okay um so let's see if we can make this work and then maybe stop the stream at this and you will guys just let me know if you think i should continue doing that and if you are interested in seeing more or maybe that project is boring and i should just stop doing it altogether and do something uh, more basic I Okay, um, so let's change this and uh, unexpected usage. Where is my where is my code? Console log with a reval code. Yes, props code. Yes, theoretically that should have been triggered. I guess should have it should have been triggered, right? Am I I'm using the preview. Yes, I am using the preview. Hmm. So why is it not triggered? Uh, here's the question log reval let's try let's try doing that the props right say props code uh, okay no reval for now we need we using the correct component right okay we don't need eval worker for now so this preview comes from task preview that is correct and the code is this state user code which is also correct oh um, i'm an idiot uh this should be static right this is why it doesn't work hey there we go okay so and you can right because the method is static we cannot actually use it in this way god damn it okay um i mean we can do a terrible thing and uh do it this way AST JSON string if by user code. Uh, oh, sorry, that should be AST, right? So this basically would trigger the and I, uh, yes, uh, idiot code. Um, probably should say return result. Oh, yeah. Handle can at length of undefined uh, parse code. Oh, now that should work. Change me node type. Okay, so JSON stringify doesn't work for some reason. Weird because the result is correct, right? And we do return this result. Um, that's that's interesting. Is that like a the um, try to do the pre here? Yep, that still doesn't help. I guess maybe because it's a circle or a structure or something like this. But we have the thing over here, and we actually. Got the variable declaration so yeah so we got the abstract syntax tree but traversing it manually is never nice so we could probably there was there was some um tooling a bit smaller maybe tooling parser core generator traverse yes there was this traverse thing that would actually help us traverse the code right so I guess we should use that as well. So basically you're gonna, we, our thing is gonna run on a Babel tool set essentially. So we're gonna import traverse. Uh, yes, I could use keyboard. You have to fall apart right now. Okay. Come on, stop. Apologies, my keyboard doesn't wanna work. There we go. Okay, um, so import parser from Maple Parser. That should make it better. Uh, no, 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 no. Do not remove this thing. Okay, and 
what we actually want to do, so we got the AST, right? So in this case, it's going to be AST. So we actually want to traverse it. And in our case, uh, name. So we basically, in this case, all we have to do is we have to search for our identifier, right? Which in this case is called change me. And path node name. Value. Okay, and so we're gonna say let's node value it's gonna be nothing. And I'm gonna say node value. I believe it is node value, but I might as well be mistaken. Node value. And then instead of doing all of that, so we're basically just gonna extract the value of the node right here, right? Well, you could do something like that. Uh, I will have a look in a second. Just give me a minute. So um, I feel like AST approach might be just what we want. And I forgot to start it. NPM run dev. Uh, okay, let's have a look at this gist. So eval. Yeah, but the problem is on. Okay, so you just. Uh, Okay, yeah, that's that's pretty that's a that's that's one way of doing it. That's true. That's actually a good approach. That might be sufficient. So that's that's a good one. Let me add this to the readme. Um, ev uh, or I guess yeah, evaluating code. Um, call it code eval options. Web worker possible possible solution. Uh, the uh, the enumeration um, use AST. So I mean I think in the you know in the very basic uh, the thing is that we would need AST anyway because like when you start working with a more complex topics like for example closures there is no way you can just execute it and get the hidden closure right so you would have to have access to AST anyway. So, um, all right, let's see, we run the thing and does it work now or does it crashes at some point? Close all of that. We don't really need this anymore. Uh, React child found object promise. Uh, wait, promise. Traverse is traverse a promise. Grateful dogs here. Um, enter path. Did it return a promise or what? Say a promise found because because it's a sync. What do you want? Parse parse of undefined. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, I guess maybe this is what you want. Okay, and uh, reval mark change me. Okay, marker not found. Worker not found, unexpected usage. So where is my, I guess it's not node value. Console log, let's see. Last time I used the AST parser was like four years ago. So hell if I remember how all of that works. Reload. Okay, so we got the nodes. We got the end start name type. Um, start end is the value. Oh, because it's not, so we need the, uh, we need the, not the, so this is where we stand in the identifier node. So we actually want the next node is, is I think what, what happens, right? Path node name. Oh God, okay, this is, this is getting tricky. Uh, right, because we need the next node. How do you actually get a Start type identifier. Can you just say so this is the path is it is identifier path node? Okay, so we got let's see, let's log path. Is there like a next node or something? There we go. There's the path. We got nodes, we got parent, we got uh parent key. Context, uh, nothing. 
Oh boy, okay. Uh, I'm guessing the Traverse doesn't really offer a way to get the next node. God, that is tricky. Let me think. I mean, one option would be to just... Okay. Parser next node. Or like just a way to say, hey, the next node. Nodes, yes, thank you very much. Going down, we enter each node, then going back up, we exit each. Node. Yes, enter, 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 exit, identifier left, identifier right. So, how do you actually way to get the value? You? Uh, no, this is not what we want. Third node value. Third string literal. Uh, okay, this is if it's already. So it is dot value, but if it's the value node. Actually, identifier node. Lexical analysis. Yes, so we got this and this and this. And case. Okay, maybe your approach would work better in here. But we still need like, <laughs> we would have to write the, um, we would have to write the, uh, again, path node. We would have to write some sort of a tooling anyway, right? Because we have to, at some point, we would have to work through the code anyway. Variable declaration, variable declarator, identifier, string, literal. Okay, so we got variable declaration, which is the var. We got declarator, which is the... Oh, this is actually what we want to look for. So we just look for... Uh, how, how do you check that? We need to look for variable declarator. Um, I guess path... Let's just type, right? Variable declarator. Okay, and... Init is what we basically want. So we're going to say path init. And it points to our nodes, which is going to be value. And this is exactly what we want. I think this should work. Uh, path init. Do it up. What do you not like? Path init. Um, okay. Am I missing? Node variable declaration. I did no declarator, right? Yes, variable declarator. Okay. Type. Yeah. Okay. We got init, which is another node, and we got value. Okay. So why is it empty? Path type. Seems correct, right? Log path. Oh, path node type. This is my problem. Node type, and there's going to be path node in its value. There we go. Command this, and now we should get. Yeah, there you go. So if we change that now. Okay, obviously it is uh, it's slow as hell. And we got undetermined string con. All oh, right, okay. And we should handle. The parsing errors, right? So try catch error, return error. Right, so we should handle the errors as well, right? So because like if, if you have correct values, it's gonna work fine. It is slow as hell right now because there is no um, web worker, but if we do this, there should be there will be an error. Okay. Right, so we got this working. Uh, now the last bit we have to make work is the testing, right? So testing uh, tests is an array. In this case, it's going to be just one test, but essentially it should be a function that uh, takes in the code, or I guess code among other things. So for now, we're going to do it this way. And then returns either true or false, right? So in this case, I think it actually, uh, I'm gonna take this and abstract it into 
that variable, or I guess parse, no, parse code for value, let's call it this way, code, right? And uh, so we got this, this formatted, and here we just say return parse code for value code, right? So we just do that. We can kill all of this thing. We don't need this anymore for now. We're gonna do that at some point later on. We don't need constructor here. Okay, and here uh, basically const value is gonna be parse code for value. It's gonna be code, right? And if value is error, we're gonna return false. Uh, return false. This and if. Uh, otherwise we're going to return no i mean we don't even need that right we can just say return value equals two this is exactly what we want okay and it's going to go here right so we now add the test suit here which means that in here let's say this no uh, it's going to be task tests map test um we are going to map it to div if Maybe it makes sense to, I, we need to give it like name and stuff, I guess. No, it doesn't really matter, right? Or maybe maybe we can expand it later. Let's just do it like this, test i, then we do test from this state user code. And if it's true, it's gonna be passing. If it's false, then it's gonna be failing. Right, that's actually all we wanna do. Test zero failing. And if I change that to two, it does not reevaluate. Why does it not, or does it reevaluate? Test zero failing. Still failing. Okay, so we got, like I re. <laughs> We really need to fix those web workers for the Monaco because this is slightly annoying. Uh, value equal two. Okay, so value, what is the block? Let's test, test two, two. Equals two, right? This is what we wanna see. Reload, test error false, their error. Right? Oh! I'm an idiot, okay. Uh, because I am calling it in a wrong way because this should be code, there we go. Okay, now it should be passing, right? There we go, okay. So we got the preview, we got the test working, we got the task. There is a ton of work here, uh, starting from fixing the Monaco to make the web workers loading to, you know, moving the parsing and logic to the web worker so it doesn't clog the uh, main thread because right now as soon as i type something it takes ages to re-render i mean it's not ages on this machine but you know it's like it's a very beefy machine so um yeah that's definitely a ton of work left to be done but we got a proof of concept working uh, which is nice and we managed to do it in more than a half hour which is also quite good I guess let me just commit that uh, possible solution. So we do need we do need to implement code evaluation as well. I don't I, I actually don't know if we need it. This team so we got code processing options. Um, move logic to service workers to free main threads, right? Okay, uh, we kind of done this. I guess we could just uh, maybe do it like this. Right, so this should be preview app to markdown. We should get nice. Uh, okay, it doesn't support checkboxes, but that seems to be fine. So we built the basic case, which means that we need to Continue building the more complicated things. And now it's basically up to you guys. Um, so just, I'm gonna be committing all this stuff and publishing it on GitHub. Ignore. Um, but 
you know, if you are watching right now or if you're watching on YouTube, do let me know if that's interesting and if I should continue or if you just want me to drop this and uh, build something else. Because I personally think there's a lot of really interesting challenges in, in here and it might be quite interesting to see the whole thing through basically. Basic of POC version. This way. And I'm gonna go to the GitHub and uh, publish it over there. Ta -ta -ta. So uh, it's it's actually nice that we were able to do all of that in just one and a half hour. Um, right, that is not what I want. Dashboard, and I guess we're. Yeah, I'll just do it here. New. Yes, craft the stupidest name ever conceived. Um, game that go see for a game that teaches you JavaScript. It's, that is the worst possible name, worst possible explanation ever. But hey, you know we did it. It kind of works. Obviously, there is a ton of things to do, but uh, that what? 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 Why do you not like? RevSpec master does not matter. Yes, this is what I wrote. What? What are you? Oh, wait, no, wait. I did. Oh, I didn't commit. God damn. Okay, I think I'm a bit tired. <laughs> um, Right. Git adds. Git commit. Basic POC version. Uh, GBG failed. But okay then. This again. Uh, what what is what is up with my GBG? Um, right. Let me try to do this with Terminator. I recently found a way to run the Linux applications on Windows, uh, like pretty much natively and GUI applications and this is really awesome and I am absolutely loving it and I finally have a proper terminal here. Um, okay, git commit. Go, oh, failed, why, what? Oh, because it updated the key base, oh, God damn it. Okay, you know what, I am not under any condition right now to actually, uh, do anything about that so i'm just gonna do this oh okay how do i disable i don't want to delete that but uh div commits gpg sign is what i want to disable right. let me commit that um am i using the wrong do i need to do both things i just don't want to sign it right now or I guess that wait a second, there should be a flag, right? Should be a commit flag that says don't sign this stuff. Or, um git commit. Oh, let me see, git commit don't sign. There we go. Signing commits. Yes, please. How do I not sign it? It says signed commit. Uh signing your work. How do I not sign it? Oh that minus s is signed. It's a minus s venture pretty by oh boy. okay can it, is it just my key base maybe i just can um yes should be logged in right i recently updated the whole vsl thing but uh okay that seems to be working um no least yeah not least oh I don't remember I don't remember how anything now works. Okay, I am too tired for this. Um d -d 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 yes, I know, I know, I know. Um, um okay. How do I not sign a commit? Public key is there a way to auto sign commits? This is what I already have. Uh, S sign. 
Okay, you know what? I'm just this and false. This and fail to write commit. Fail to sign the day. But I'm not, I haven't disabled the signing. What are you talking about? Git config. Okay. What is happening? I didn't even change it. That's interesting. This one. No. It is slightly. PPG sign, right? Yeah, this is exactly what we said to false. Do I need to kill you and restart you? Is that what you're getting at? Um, let me think. Maybe there's some old rogue pro GPG agent. There we go. If I kill your ass and I kill your ass, now it maybe should work. So terminate her. Will you work now? Okay. Uh, right, okay, this is not git repository, that makes sense. pxjs, uh, yes, come, git status, git commit, and for real. Okay, you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna figure this out off the stream. So uh, let me have a quick look in the chat. Meanwhile, if you have any questions, do feel free to send them in there. So let's see, it is interesting, but there are a lot of issues to come if you think you don't mind them. I mean, that's the whole, like this, the whole idea of research and development streams, right? Because there will be a lot of issues. There will be a lot of challenges that I've never even thought about. And for me, it's always interesting to kind of dig into stuff like this. So I think it's a cool uh, thing to do basically. Um, but yeah, okay, so thank you for the opinion. All right, is there any more questions, notes, or things that you guys want to ask or mention? Or maybe there are similar projects that I'm just not aware of. Uh, although, you know, there's not much of a project right now, but uh, hey, I don't have a Git here, right? No, I don't have a Git. Right, okay. Uh, yeah, doesn't seem like there is any more questions. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the stream. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to leave anything in the comments. Um, be sure to join our Discord server for more discussions on what to stream and where to go with the project. Thank you for watching and I see you next time. Bye.